I'm GP champion Christian Calcano, and you're watching Magic Time. My journey to Grand Prix Minneapolis began Friday morning as I arrived at the Minneapolis International Airport, which had recently been voted the best airport in the country by Travel and Leisure magazine. I made my way to the basement level of the airport and found the light rail system, which for a mere $2.75 can take you straight from the airport to many of the best places Minneapolis has to offer, including the Mall of America, Target Field, home of the Minnesota Twins, and downtown where the Minneapolis Convention Center can be found. After checking in at the hotel across the street of the convention center, I made my way to Hall A, where I purchased the cards I needed for the standard deck I was using in the tournament. I was one of 1,048 players to register for the tournament and receive a promo goblin guide, and was one of 600 to procure a free promotional playbook. I was well on my way to a disappointing 1-3-1 finish before dropping from the tournament, but instead of hearing about my tournament woes, let's talk to some people and find out a little more about what you can expect when visiting Minneapolis for a big magic tournament. Uh, Minneapolis is a beautiful city. If you've not been to Minneapolis, you should go. Uh, it's like a great town, it has a lot to do. The convention center is like very like, centrally located. Uh, there's the Mall of America, which I'm probably going to tomorrow. Uh, it's a it's a fun place and definitely one of the better cities I have been to. Um, yeah, most of the same. Like most of like. When I go to Grand Prix, I never really have any time to see the cities because I usually just come in like the day before the tournament and leave the day after. So usually I would see the convention center or like eat at a good restaurant or whatnot. So I mean, like for me, it's just like any other Grand Prix to me, really. Well, Minneapolis is kind of our backyard. We're out of Madison, Wisconsin, and we do tons of PTQs in Madison and Minneapolis. Uh, we love the city. We come here all the time. It's a great city. If you ever, I, I, if you're going to PTQs on a regular basis, if you're going to Pro Tours, always stay one extra day. Check out the city. Wizards always pick some very good cities for just hanging out, having a good time, and, and you don't want to just be doing magic and work. You got to be doing other stuff. So the venue's okay. I think it's fine. The closest food thing is like a few blocks away, which kind of sucks. The closest vending machine is $3, even though I know of like a different one that's like $1.25 or whatever, but it's like so far away. If you if you smoke, you have to go up three levels. That kind of sucks too. Um, like Nashville has one of the best venues, I think, like the uh, Aubreyland Hotel. I don't know if you've been there, but that place is, that place is awesome. Uh, a bunch of food right around there. I mean, I like the city of Minneapolis. I like the fact that like this is actually downtown. It's not like, um, where some of the Star City events go to, they go to like Boxborough instead of Boston, and there's just like nothing around there. Like that kind of sucks. And at least, at least here it's like you have nightlife, you have food, you have basically like everything you want. Uh, the convention center could be a little better, but it's pretty good. I was surprised by the size of the city. I was told that it's it's like a mile by a mile, and I don't know if that's correct, but I, I thought I've never been to Minnesota before. I always thought Minneapolis is this gigantic city. And it seems very well kept, very clean, everything has been easy to get around to. I've been very well impressed. I think this is a great city. You know, I, I, I have nothing bad to say about it. I mean, there's a fogo de chow here, so I don't see why you wouldn't want to go there. To Roots Chris one night, and uh, Boca de Beppo last night, so pretty nice restaurants. Uh, we went to a place called Hell's Kitchen, which is, uh, I think, unique to here. I, I can't tell you. The food there was a little bit different than you normally would expect in terms of combinations. It was absolutely fantastic the way it was prepared and the presentation was like that. I was glad we went. It was a unique store place to go to. And the coolest thing there was the sausage bread. Don't knock it till you try it. It's actually quite good. <laughs> I guess if you're in Minneapolis, uh... One box? Greg, what's the pizza place called? Pizza... Pizza Luce. Lu pizza Luce. It's L-U-C-E. Really good. It, it, it's pizza, but... It's really good pizza. Um, well, last night we went to a club called The Saloon that was very fun. Yeah, that, that, was, that, that was a blast. Um, but I, I, I haven't found a restaurant around here that I particularly like yet. 
It was day two of Grand Prix Minneapolis, and it was reaching its conclusion. Many hopes and dreams had been shattered at this point, and the final standings were being posted. In the end, 1,040 players had been eliminated, and now the feature tables were being set up, and the coverage team was ready to spring into action as an exciting top eight laid before us. All right, so this, this top eight happening like right now, have they started yet? Yeah. They're playing right now over there. This is the Grand Prix Minneapolis. This top eight is sick. There's so many friends of mine in it, and so many like just really good players. My buddy uh, Jared Schultz is a judge, and he was not supposed to be playing in this tournament. He was supposed to be judging, but they had too many judges. They were like, hey dude, you know, you can play for free since you signed up to judge. And he's like, okay, fine, I guess I'll play. And he is right now playing in the top eight, and I'm so happy for him. Then who else do we have in that topic? We got Jared, and then like, yeah, there's there's Brad and Josh who are just like, you know, very well known names, old friends of mine, and you know, very cool dudes. I'm super happy for that. Calcano finally made a top eight after so long. So long, can you believe that? Calcano's in the top eight, that is just awesome. Uh, ben Friedman's in there, my friend Rick. Oh my god, this is just this is just so awesome. I don't even know who to root for, like everyone's just amazing. I am so happy for all of them. It was looking pretty grim for Christian Calcano in the final four, as he was dead on board in game three, facing down flying spirits and a geist of St. Traft. He needed a miracle to save him, and he pulled off a miracle during his opponent's upkeep. With a desolate lighthouse, he looted to reveal the top card of his library was a Bonfire of the Damned, which was enough to buy him time in order to play a sideboarded Frost Titan and make a copy of it using Phantasmal Image. He rode both Titans and a Dungeon Geist to victory. His reward? 2010 Player of the Year Brad Nelson, who was sporting a mono blue Grand Architect deck, but unlike the previous round, which took Alcano well over an hour to complete, he needed only around 15 minutes to take both games from Brad Nelson and become Grand Prix Minneapolis champion. Actually, I've been working for magazines and books, um, I did cover art, I did comics, and later I started to work for the collectible card game, uh, Game of Thrones, and after that, uh, I was trying to send samples of my work to Wizards of the Coast, and actually Todd Lockwood helped me a little bit, because he told me to send portfolio, and I, I just did, and Art directors probably liked it because they hired me for um, mirroring. I, I use various styles. Um, at the beginning, I was mostly doing sketches with pencil, uh, but later, of course, uh, I do all the sketches in computer because because it's it's much easier to just rework something that probably wizards don't like or they want some change or I can use layers and add colors uh, I can experiment with colors so I do sketches mostly in computer um, at the beginning I did many pieces in acrylics on board and just one cloud post was done in oils and a few years ago I started to do to create everything in, in computer mostly in Painter and Photoshop. Um, like maybe for five years. And later I decided to go back to acrylics because it's just, it's nicer to touch the surface and um, uh, I find the, because in digital I think I'm losing my, I don't know, it, uh, it looks more smooth, more... It doesn't have those nice structures to it. My favorite cards are probably Tatsumasa, then uh, Squadron Hawk, and the dragon that goes with Tatsumasa, because I did them both at the same time. I was told to do the sword, which turns into dragon, and I didn't really know that the dragon is not going to be printed on a card. I still have both originals at home because they are nice when they are next to each other. They have both the same elements on them, like the sword has these geometric
symmetrical stuff in Handel and the same the dragon has the same stuff on him. And uh, yeah, Squadron Hawk. Somehow I just like the painting, even if I maybe hate the sky because it took me much longer than all the birds. I did the birds for one hour maybe and those those clouds around them I did over the week or it took forever. Yes, I like many of the other cards and artists but very often I don't remember which card is made by which artist but when I get the new deck I always go through all of the cards and I pick up the ones that I like when I like the art I don't really look at what the cards do <laughs> I like some uh, work by Greg Staples and well many many others it really depends um, because sometimes the actual art isn't really hard to do the problem is you also have to think about it to come with the sketch, wait for the answer, prepare the board, then start to work, maybe find some references. When I do animals I need a lot of reference because, um, for example, now I'm looking at seeding song. I can't believe it, I did seeding song for three hours. I don't know how, it just happened. It usually doesn't happen. <laughs> Uh, I did some, but but the whole process with the sketches and everything, well, takes probably one month or two weeks, depends. Um, I do a lot of stuff for Game of Thrones since the beginning. It was written in '96, I think, and I started for card game. I did many paintings for the art book. Uh, I did, I do a lot of cover arts for books and magazines and for translation of Game of Thrones in Germany, Czech Republic, audiobooks, and I did some cards for World of Warcraft game, and I worked on two film projects, but they got actually never made. I know the general idea I tried to play when I went for signings in Europe. For a few years I went for so many events, and in the evening when we stopped to sign, um, I just used to play with the judges and they taught me how it was fun. Um, I had some good times in Helsinki, in Paris, it's hard to say but I always met some new interesting people and it was fun. I was tired but still fun. Oh. Okay, the first thing is uh, he or she has to have some portfolio, at least some five, six pieces that are based on some existing uh, characters or lands. Uh, it's usually not good when somebody sends entirely different stuff because if you do, for example, some artifact or land that is let's say green or red it has to be green or red land because magic is really specific about colors uh, we artists always get the style guide and we have to keep in mind what color is the card if it's artifact what mood it should have and um, another important thing is the card is printed on a really small you know the painting is really small on a card so even if you do the big painting, it still has to look nice when it's really small and it's hard. So usually you have to go for the contrast. You have, if you have too many details, they will be probably lost when it's small. Um, and then just try to send it and just keep playing. And if you want to work for wizards, just try to do really good art and keep sending it. Like, I kept sending stuff for five years. It took me some time, time to get in. Thanks for tuning in and watching part one of my Grand Prix Minneapolis coverage. Make sure you tune in next time when I have full interviews with the pro players Jerry Thompson, Mary Jacobson, and Grand Prix Minneapolis champion, 
Christian Calcano. So I'll see you next time on Magic Time. Oh, my God.